I want to talk with you about some exciting new nanotechnology that's derived from cellulose, a basic building block of plants. These nanotechnologies will make products that we use every day much better, and they'll benefit the planet as well. But before I talk about that, I want to talk about where they come from. You see, we can develop cellulosic nanomaterials from the trees in our forests. I have to say that I'm actually concerned about the forests of the United States. You've probably seen reports of forest fire. One third of our forests are at risk of catastrophic wildfire. Invasive species occupy 40% of forested acres. Insects and diseases threaten them. In fact, in my neighborhood, one of the very last ash trees is in our front yard. That tree is very important to our family. It gives shade to our home. It hosts all kinds of wildlife. I've even seen a Baltimore Oriole in its branches. And Orioles are tough to see unless you're in a baseball stadium. So we really care about that tree. But I've seen the signs of emerald ash borer, which is an invasive insect that's infesting trees all across the country and killing them. That tree won't be long. You probably can tell that I have a, a little bit of a bias. I love trees. In fact, when I went to my son, Michael Anthony's kindergarten class, and I talked about my love of trees, Haley, one of his classmates, looked at me and asked the question that's on every six-year-old's mind when you declare your love for something. Oh, you love them. Do you want to kiss them? Sadly, I told her I don't kiss them, but I have been known to hug a tree or two. In fact, my entire family has. This photo has four of the things I love most in the world. My wife, Mila, we're celebrating our anniversary today, actually. And my children, Maria and Michael Anthony, who are also with me. We try really hard to stay healthy as a family. We try to make sure we get the right nutrition. And I'm very sorry about all the broccoli children. We try to make sure that we get the right medical care so that we can grow and thrive and we get the exercise that we need. And like family health, forest health is a lot of work as well. Forests, though, they need markets to thrive. A lot of people think that harvesting trees is inherently a bad thing to do. But that's not true. If we harvest sustainably, we can actually generate a lot of benefit for forests. There's a study of forests in the southern United States. And interestingly, over 50 years, demand for forest products has increased in those forests. And landowners have responded to that demand by keeping their land in forests and doubling the productivity of those lands. When the value was there, they invested in their trees. That's what markets do for forests. And that's why it's good for all of us. Now, I was voted in high school most likely to save the planet. Now, I can't imagine that guy actually saving a receipt. <laughs> but nevertheless, my classmates had very high hopes for me. But it, the thing is, it's all because of this love for the forest that I've had for my entire life. They fascinate me. They can grow as tall as the Statue of Liberty. And they can move water all the way from their roots to the top of the tree without a pump. They can withstand the winds of a hurricane. They can grow on the face of a cliff. They store millions of tons of carbon dioxide. They clean the air of pollution. They're absolutely incredible. And I want to introduce you to the very tiny role that they have in saving the planet. You heard me right. I said tiny role. And I know you're thinking, well, forests have a huge role to play in saving the planet. And you're absolutely right. They store 14% of carbon dioxide emissions, which of course is a greenhouse gas that hastens climate change. They provide 60% of the fresh water that we drink here in the United States. They provide us with places to recreate, to go for hikes, to fish, to see birds. They truly make our lives better. But the role, the tiny role that I want to introduce you to is enormously significant. 
And it comes from cellulosic nanomaterials. Now, when I say tiny, I mean tiny. A nanometer is incredibly small. A human hair is 80,000 to 100,000 nanometers wide. Looking at me, I'm realizing you're having a very difficult time understanding the width of a human hair. Let me help you out a little bit more, okay? This pinhead is a million nanometers wide, okay? And we can make cellulosic nanomaterials that are just six nanometers wide. When we get down to that nanoscale, exciting things start to happen. In the case of gold, it's no longer a golden color. It's actually red. Now, with cellulose, it becomes as strong as steel with just a fifth of the weight. Making these materials isn't even all that complicated. It's a lot like paper chemistry. Like in paper science, we break trees down to their finest, finest levels, and then we just separate out the cellulosic nanomaterials. My scientific friends at the US Forest Service who made this technology possible will be laughing about my simplification of that technology, but nevertheless, it's not a tough process. Once we have that material, really exciting things we can accomplish with it. We can add it to car parts to make them lighter weight. When we have lighter car parts, we have lighter cars which get better gas mileage, which reduce carbon emissions. We can actually create packaging that mimics plastics with no plastic in them whatsoever, and it's completely biodegradable. Exciting things are possible with these materials, and I'm looking forward to a future with them in them. Now, one of the really interesting applications for cellulosic nanomaterials is concrete. Yes, I just said concrete was interesting. I promise you, it is. This is history that you are witnessing right there. This is the first time that cellulosic nanomaterials were put into a commercial cement truck. I know, it's incredibly dramatic, isn't it? Very exciting. But the truth is, this is, looks a lot scarier uh, when you know what's going on behind it. We were actually a bit afraid that during this trial, we would actually have to buy the cement truck at the end of it because we'd screw it up. Thankfully, there is not a cement truck in front of my house, my wife Mila, and our neighbors are very excited about that, as am I. But we were able to conduct some really successful trials with this. See, concrete is made up of sand, gravel, and cement. And that cement component is incredibly energy intensive to make. We use four trillion tons of concrete worldwide. It's a huge market. It emits 5% of worldwide carbon dioxide emissions. It's because making that cement takes so much energy. You have to heat it to 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit. And then, in addition to all the energy that it takes to do that, the rock itself had carbon dioxide stored in it, and when you heat it up, it releases it. This is an industry with a real emissions problem. Now, cellulosic nanomaterials can help. If we add just a little bit to the mix, we can reduce the amount of emissions by 15%. So how does that work? Well, it's really interesting. When we add cellulose nanomaterials to the mix, we help the hydration of concrete. You want concrete to be wet, but not too wet. If you make it really wet, it'll crack. If it's too dry, it won't be strong enough. But cellulosic nanomaterials increase the hydration of the concrete, but reduce the amount of water in the mix. We get stronger concrete. Because we have stronger concrete, we can actually remove some of that cement, 15% of it, 15% savings in emissions exciting opportunities because of things like cellulosic nanomaterials. Now, how does that actually help the forest? Well, let me give you a concrete example. I was recently in Wairika, California, which is at the foot of Mount Shasta in the northern part of the state. It's spectacular there. And the town is surrounded by beautiful forests. But those forests are choked with small, dead, and dying trees. And these trees have no commercial value. You can't get them to pay their way out of the woods. But cellulosic nanomaterials are emerging as a new market, a new market that can help remove those materials, protect the forest, protect the town, and create jobs in Wairika. The people there are actually excited about this technology and will be putting in the first commercial bridge deck in the world in their town that's reinforced with cellulosic nanomaterials. This summer, we'll be doing some further tests with them. We're going to bring a concrete truck. They're going to bring the labor. We're going to pour some concrete. And together, we're going to make a better bridge, a stronger community, 
and together a better, cleaner, greener world. Now you know how important forests are to saving the planet. Now you know that just a tiny bit of them can make an enormous contribution. To me, what's exciting about markets like this is it allows us to do different things with forests. You know, if you love forests like I do, and you want them to be there for your children, I ask you to think a little bit differently. Instead of just hugging a tree, get your mind wrapped around the idea that using trees, products from trees, can actually help sustain forests, forests that help sustain us all.